Thanks for watching. It's been seven days since Mitt Romney had a slip of the tongue when introducing his running mate. Join me in welcoming the next president of the United States, Paul Ryan. Well, that was a mistake. But over the past week, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan have repeated lie after lie after lie. So I, I thought it would be good if we should just pick up the Big 80 Board of Truth tonight and keep track of the lies from the GOP ticket just this week. There's only one president that I know of in history that robbed Medicare $716 billion to pay for a new risky program of his own that we call Obamacare. Oh, the Medicare lie, that is a big one. And it helped create more lies to benefit Paul Ryan. This man said, I'm going to find Democrats to work with, found a Democrat to co-lead a piece of legislation to make sure we can save Medicare. Simply not true, says the very Democrat Mitt Romney is talking about. Senator, Mitt Ro Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon said, Governor Romney is talking nonsense. I did not co-lead a piece of legislation. Now, let's see. That's two lies so far. What else is there? Bob played me a tape of, of, of one of the ads that President Obama has out there, and I, I just scratched my head. He talks about how wonderful it is and how we're adding jobs in the coal industry and producing more coal. And I thought, you know, how in the world can you go out there and just tell people things that aren't true? But the president is telling the truth. Since 2008, there are more coal jobs and there is more coal production in the United States. Well, the lies just keep on coming. Remember this one? Going out and saying he's going to take the welfare, excuse me, the work requirement on a welfare. How in the world could he not understand the power of work? The work requirement for welfare isn't going anywhere. This is an outright lie. Romney's television ads are lying also. So now the money you paid for your guaranteed health care is going to a massive new government program that's not for you. It is for seniors. Obamacare helps seniors pay for medicine and preventive care. Today's seniors, if you will, my plan presents no change. The plan stays the same. Romney's plan causes Medicare premiums to rise in order to pay for tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans. So that's another lie. So let's see now. If you're scoring at home, we're now up to six so far. The generation after today's seniors, generations after the, today's seniors. And under the president's plan, this goes bankrupt. Under the plan that I proposed, it is solvent. Oh, now this one is a double lie. The Medicare trustees say that President Obama's plan extends Medicare's solvency like eight years. Meanwhile, the Romney-Ryan plan would end Medicare as we know it. OK, if you're scoring, we're up to eight. And it's not just Mitt Romney who is lying. Do you think the Obama bailout of the auto industry was a good idea sitting here today? Didn't help Janesville. They shut our plant down. It didn't help Kenosha. I represent there. Shut down the Chrysler plant. Really? Even though Paul Ryan voted for the automobile loan? What I voted for was to prevent a worse bailout. This dishonesty definitely counts as a lie. And so does this. I live in Janesville, Wisconsin. We used to have a big General Motors plant. A lot of my high school buddies worked at that GM plant. That GM plant was shut down in 2009. I remember President Obama visiting it uh, when he was first running, saying he'll keep that plant open. One more broken promise. Now, here's the problem with this lie. The factory Ryan is talking about was closed under George W. Bush. Good afternoon. I'm Eric Franke with this C3K to go update for Tuesday, June 3rd. Rising gas prices and a sluggish economy forcing the hand at General Motors. Topping our news today, the decision to close Janesville's GM plant. So we're in double digits now. Ten lies in a week. What do you think? Can we make it 11? You had asked for stimulus money for your district. Is that accurate? No, I, Is I that report I accurate? I asked for stimulus. I don't, I, I don't recall. I haven't seen this report, so I really can't comment on it. Getting tired yet? I never asked for stimulus money. This isn't just a lie. This is the height of hypocrisy. Listen to Paul Ryan talking about his stimulus vote in 2010. 
I assume you voted against the stimulus, and I'm just curious if you accepted any monies in your district. No, I'm not one of those who votes for something and then writes to the government to ask them to send us money. I did not request any stimulus money. Ryan has successfully lobbied for federal stimulus funds since 2009. As recently as five months ago, Ryan was still securing federal funds for his district. Now, letters show Ryan's signature on requests for money to invest in green technology and alternative fuels. Now, we would applaud the congressman from Wisconsin for the use of good government programs if he wasn't always lying about how bad they are. Ryan should probably expect more reactions like the one he got today. Who have epitomized what the American idea is all about. Why did you lie about accepting who have, who have epitomized... So what do we have here? Can you blame the guy for standing up? Because we've got now 11 lies in one week. One week, 11 lies. Now let me, let me pull a mitt here and make this real easy for everybody to understand. That would be 11 lies and zero lies from the Obama campaign. Romney and Ryan set a high bar for themselves when it comes to deceiving the American public, don't you think? You think they'll get into double figures again next week? Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question. Who's a bigger liar? Mitt Romney or Paul Ryan? Text A for Mitt Romney. Text B for Paul Ryan to 622-639. You can always go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com. And we'll, of course, bring you the results later on in the program. I am joined tonight by Congresswoman Gwen Moore of the great state of Wisconsin. Yes. Congresswoman, great to have you with us tonight. Appreciate your time. Oh, you, uh, you, you, you're, you're on the budget committee in the House, which, of course, this is the committee that Paul Ryan chairs. Is he a hypocrite? Well, Ed, you know, I feel very sorry for Paul Ryan because Paul Ryan had hails from a district that leans Democratic. And so he has done the right thing in stewardship of his district. He has sought stimulus dollars. He sought very, very hard to keep the Kenosha plant going. Uh, and I was on a letter with him and with both our senators, Senators Feingold and Senators Cole, uh, trying to get money out of Treasury to retool the Kenosha plant because uh, uh, I was born in Paul Ryan's district, and I have a great deal of affection uh, for that community. Uh, and now that he is a national player, he's got to walk back from uh, the commitment that he has made to that community. And I think that he succeeded in that community uh, because he was responsive to the needs of that community. And like so many other Republicans uh, who wanted to decry the failure of the stimulus, uh, you know, on one hand, they want to decry it to Republican donors. Uh, and on the other hand, they want to stand there and pose for holy pictures uh, when those dollars come in. And so I. I so think what do you what do you I mean, if you had to score the first week of the number of lies, how would you characterize their first week on the campaign trail? Well, let me tell you, Ed, it really does cause me pain. Uh, to hear the Romney team claim that they're not going to end Medicare as we know it, uh, to hear them talk about how the president has taken $716 billion out of it, out of Medicare, but that they aren't planning on doing that when, in fact, they have taken that much and more out of Medicare uh, with the intention of costing seniors a minimum of $6,400 a year more uh, and and you know, leaving in giving them it up to up to the tender mercies of the insurance company. It's been very, very painful. Yeah. Uh, well, this is one thing. It's one thing to respect Paul Ryan uh, for his independence. And it's another thing uh, to see him and Mitt Romney try to walk back. And yes, I'll use your word, lie about what their real goals and intentionality is. I don't think the Democrats in any way, shape or form can be afraid to tell it like it is what these two candidates are doing on the campaign trail in America. They are repeatedly lying to the American people. Congresswoman Gwen Moore, great to have you with us tonight. Thanks for your time. Now let's turn to MSNBC political analyst Richard Wolf. Richard, has it been a rough week at the office for this brand new ticket that says they have the plan for America? 
Well, it's not exactly been great, let's face it. You know, uh, Mitt Romney wheeled out that whiteboard. And and one of the signs that you've got that this ticket is, is, is struggling here is that they're trying to bring the candidates back together again. What you want to do in any campaign, once you get a VP pick, is send them out to different parts of the country. That's where you, you maximize your reach. You, you get into that regional media that the single candidate cannot do. If you have to bring them back, according to reports, because Mitt Romney himself needs his spirits lifted or they want to build bigger crowds, you're really looking at what McCain had with Sarah Palin, which is the top of the ticket needs the help of the number two pick, and that's a bad dynamic. So why are they back together so soon? Well, I, I think, you know, Mitt Romney has struggled with his message. He has tried to go out there talking about Medicare uh, and ended up talking about his tax returns. Talking about Medicare at all is completely off topic. And by the way, just to come back to this question about what the president's doing with Medicare, this is a party uh, in the Republicans and, and the top of the ticket that says all the time that the president's doing nothing about entitlements, that he's not facing up to the challenges that Medicare faces. And yet when he tries through the Affordable Care Act to deal with fraud, waste and abuse and try and control the rising costs of Medicare, they say that that's wrong and evil yeah. and, and raiding seniors. If that's not lying, it's at least rank hypocrisy. Uh, Politico quotes a Romney advisor saying that Romney and Ryan will not be discussing details of the Ryan plan, saying that it's not only politically unwise to do that, but it's not how the voters engage in a presidential campaign. I mean, how how can they just continually to get away with avoiding specifics? I mean, it's going to be is this going to be a very shallow campaign? Well, it already is. But, uh, you know, the problem for Paul Ryan is that when you're on the House Budget Committee, with all due respect to them, it's not the same as being on a national ticket. You face a totally different kind of scrutiny. And here is a guy who's portrayed himself as being serious and intellectually coherent and everything else. And a fiscal hawk, let's face it. He takes three decades to balance his budget, which puts, makes him anything but a fiscal hawk. He's projecting out budgets into 2050 and saying that's when it's all going to work. Anyone who's serious about the budget knows that isn't worth the paper it's written on. You know, the Financial Times, my former publication, their top op-ed columnist has just written a searing uh, 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 critique of the Paul Ryan budget. He called it inadequate, incomplete and incredible. And by incredible, he meant not mm. credible. These numbers don't add up. And, and, you know, for someone who says, I'm going to balance the budget, but wants to cut taxes across the board, that's just no way. That's not conservative. It's why Newt Gingrich yeah. said this was radical. Uh, right-wing social engineering. Well, it's going to be fun to see their tap dance in Florida this weekend when it comes to Medicare questions. Richard Wolf, great to have you with us tonight. Thanks so much. Remember to answer tonight's question there at the bottom of the screen. Share your thoughts on Twitter at Ed Show and on Facebook. We want to know what you think. Up next, selling that package in Florida, the Medicare lie to seniors. Paul Ryan will now face thousands of retirees tomorrow. Find out why he needs his mother to go along with him when we come back. 